shall not be required to be residents or qualified voters of the municipality in which they are appointed to serve, or residents of the parish in which the municipality is located. That makes no sense because they just told us the paragraph before that the two members only have to be residents of the parish. The statute is confusing and so to be safe, we know for a fact that the two members elected have to be mem uh, residents of the parish. And so I, don't, I wanna avoid prioritizing the city of Lafayette resident over the parish of Lafayette resident if in fact I'm reading the statute correctly, which it, it says what it says. So if you get a city of Lafayette, let me get, put that in a practical term of an example. If you get a city of Lafayette resident apply to be uh, elected for the fire representative, right, on the board, and you get a parish of Lafayette resident, and we turn to the parish of Lafayette resident, we say, you can't apply. The city of Lafayette guy trumps you. You can't even apply and you won't get voted on. And he turns to the statute and he says, wait, t time out. Subsection B only says I have to be a resident of the parish. It doesn't say I have to be a resident of the municipality. And the other thing is, it doesn't say the city trumps the parish. So I don't think you have enough in the statute to create a, an amendment to this resolution that would go as far as to prioritize on the top city of Lafayette, second parish of Lafayette, and then outside the parish. But I do believe, as the amendment is written, you have the power to establish that the exception of residency doesn't kick in until you have neither the city of Lafayette or the parish of Lafayette applicant. Yeah. Well, the, the, the uniqueness is that a city of Lafayette resident is a resident correct. of the parish That's of Lafayette, correct. unlike any other person. Right. So, um, so before we before we go back, Miss Cook has an amendment on the floor. Does she have a second? Okay. That's seconded by Conk. We're going to continue the discussion, but there's amendment on the floor, and of course we're going to still honor blue cards as always. The original motion was by Naki and second by Bellard. The amendment is by Cook, second by Conk. Yeah, we going back to it. Mr. Castillo. Thank you, sir. Okay. If I have two firefighters running for the position, one's a city resident, one's a parish resident, they both can run. Yes, sir. And either one can get elected. Yes, sir. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, according to this that, right here. That's correct. Okay. Fire and police, both sides. Correct. Yeah, it's, and, it's, it's because, across the board. Yeah, if, if you notice on the back, it specifically repeals the previous police yeah. resolution. Yeah. yeah. All right. If for some reason, I don't know why I want to say this. Because you're a good guy. I know exactly what you're about to say. We Thank you, Mr. Pedro. We change anything. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that. If, if we don't get either, we have to come back and revisit this? Wait, if you don't get either what? Parish guy or city guy wants to run, but there's somebody else who wants to run. No, wait, wait, wait. Like That's exactly did. what this resolution does. The, if, the amendment? To the, res the, the amendment to the resolution says, if you do not get an applicant who is a out. city or a Lafayette, a parish or, uh, or Lafayette city, then, they can go out. then the resolution says you can go outside, you can okay. waive the residency requirements and go outside. Okay, good. Good. Okay, uh, I could I could live with that. Um, and, and for the record, um, Mr. Boudreaux, you and I go back a long ways, man. Long. Uh, I don't usually. That's. You know the the, the racial comments that were made and, and what Mr. Bellard alluded to. Uh, it did kind of hit home, like. Uh, he, I know he's not really meaning that, can't be meaning that. Uh, we've been through, through, through too much together. So I put that aside. I'm not even going to think about it anymore. It's, it's, it didn't happen. But there, but there was a, a difference between the voting, what the board did with the police chief's issue, and what this 
body wants to do what these guys want to do. It's two different voting actions, uh, and they're separate. And they should, they should be separate. So I want to clarify that. It's, it's, that's two different things. The body wants to vote for a representative. The board voted an action. Two different things. You, can, you, can't, you can't combine those two. Um, but I, I, I could live with this, this resolution as, as stated by Mr. Escott and, and Ms. Cook. And the second by Mr. Conk. One parish guy got to move into your district soon. I'm telling you. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Um, I, I've heard the word consistent here today and in, in, in trying to bring things together. Um, so I guess it would be appropriate to ask is that why not do it the exact same way the police department did it? Let's get an endorsement from the chief, but that don't happen because the fire chief don't want this. Let's get this, and in, in, in the, the attorney just said, this is of the municipal fire and police departments, not unions. And what's happening is that this is being run. Wait a minute now, I got the floor. If you press your button and I'm going to bring you back as soon as I'm done. Okay? This is an issue of the municipal fire and police departments. And I remember very vividly that when Guy Leberton and Chief Kraft came into my office, they had the endorsement of the department. Okay? And that was one of the main things. And to address the issue, we know that there's two professional organizations within each department. In the fire department, there is the union, and then there's the Southwest Professional Firefighters. In the police department, there's the union, and there's the Magnolia State Peace Officers. And out of an abundance of precaution, I went to the Magnolia State Peace Officers, and at that time, they did not have opposition. So this was brought forward different. What I'm saying here today is that we don't have the endorsement of the chief. We don't have the endorsement of the mayor. We don't have a vote or resolution of any body of the department, but yet we say we want to still go forward and be consistent. So my ask is, could this be reconsidered if and when we get those endorsements? Mr. Castillo? Yes. This amendment seems to be consistent across the board for everyone. And this is not a union action. Clarify that. The union didn't come ask me for anything. Okay? I was a union member for years. Still a union member. But they didn't approach me with this. I approached the administration with this a few months back to come back and, and, and either bring the police department back to where it's supposed to be or bring the firewood, you know, to kind of get it back on a, on a fair and consistent playing field. This is why it's here. Now, if this, re if this resolution, the amendment works and does those things, I'm good. And we can move on. But it wasn't a union action that brought this at all. Thank you, sir. So Jason Boudrax and the fire chief wasn't a union action? I didn't speak to Jason Boudreau. We don't, we don't talk. I don't see Jason Boudreau. I brought this to his attention. He last time, hold on, Jay. Hold up. He, he walked right up here hang to on, his DA. Hang on. And uh, you for you talk. Let me talk. Okay. When he was pulled, talked to Mr. Mr. Robodeau on the side. Asked him what's going on, what's, what's, what's happening with this. And he explained what, he was, what, what his reasons were. Mr. Boudreau never asked me nothing about that. When he was pulled, it, it brought my curiosity. Why, why is this being pulled? It's only doing what the police department had done at one time. So what's the reason behind this? Mr. Boudreau never asked me nothing before he was pulled. And he didn't ask me to do this. No conversation with Mr. Boudreau about this. This was done when he was pulled by the administration. And I approached the administration and asked him what was going on. He explained himself. And I asked him, well, then we need to come back with something. That's, that's where yeah. the, and when it came back, I still feel that the department should be able to vote for who they feel want to represent them, regardless who they are. No matter. So 
but that's what happened. Mr. Lewis. Yes, uh, as I said earlier um, about pulling it, what, what can we do as far as uh, being that we don't have support of the fire chief or endorsement or from the mayor, can, can we perhaps uh, revisit this? It would, um, the answer to that, it would have to be a majority of the council willing to do so. By vote. Mr. Nakan? After all the consideration and the discussion, I think the a proposed amendment is fair and equal. And I understand what you're trying to get endorsement or trying to get approval from the chief or, or what, I don't know where you want to get approval from, but on this council, what we just talked about in the discussion actually clarifies and makes everything equal. And we do things as a legislative body sometimes that we don't get the approval of the mayor. Or we don't get the approval of the department head when we decide to cut their budgets or promotion. I mean, not everybody's going to agree and be on the same page. It's obvious they got nine representatives up here, and it's not too often on a controversial issue, it'll go 9 0. So I do respect that we, you know, the fact that you would like to have everybody on board, but I don't think delaying making an amendment and coming up with something that actually addresses what the original concern was, which is putting the city of Lafayette and having that opportunity for someone in the city of Lafayette or the parish to sit on the board. And then the fact that if none of those are applicable, then it allows us to go outside the box. But the priority is the city of Lafayette or our parish resident, and it gives the equal on both departments. And, and I have to say that I actually appreciate all the information that everybody, from Mayor Robodeau to you, to Jay, to, G, to Liz's question, and, and Annette and, and Jared, um, and even Pat. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think, Bruce, you, know, you Bruce and Williams on the one that didn't say nothing, but um, I, I, I support, you second, good job. So after further consideration, I, I do support this amendment right here. And uh, that's where I'm at. Thanks. You all cancel. Okay. There doesn't seem to be any more council discussion. Let's go to blue cards at this time, please. First speaker, Wallace Senegal. Good evening again, gentlemen. <clears throat> you know, uh, Councilman Boudreau, I uh, Chair, agree with. Hey, I'm I'm sorry. Is is this on the amendment only? Is what you're calling for blue cards, or is it on the entire? Um um um. Let's go with the amendment. That's a good catch. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, what's happening? And we I guess we couldn't give the option. Um, and I, I missed that. I apologize. An amendment has been made, so would we do to honor blue cards and to give everyone the opportunity to speak, we split it to go on the amendment first, and then you have the opportunity to come back and speak again on the ordinance if it's in fact amended. So um, I'm glad our council caught that. So what, what you're going to be restricted to on this time, but you get two times, is to speak on what Ms. Cook has offered as the amendment. Okay. Well. <clears throat> I, I'm agreeing with you on a lot of things that were said tonight as a chairperson of the council and the things that's gone on in Lafayette. I remember when uh, <clears throat> Mayor uh, Rupido wanted the civil service board. It, Mr. Senegal, you're going to have to talk about that one when you come back. Okay, yeah. on the next one. On the next one. Okay, yeah. well, but on, on, on what Ms. Cook pro, uh, proposed and what Mr. Conk second, as it relates to that, if, if you could well, what I'm that, gonna do, yeah. what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave y'all deal with the amendment because uh, the amendment came after, and right. I was basically 
on the agenda. Right. So I'm going to leave you guys deal with the amendment, then we're going to come, come back. In which all speakers actually, that's the actual option, is that you could pass on speaking on this and speak just to the ordinance once it has been or has not been amended. Okay, so well, you didn't that's, explain that's that. actually the option of the Yeah, and explain that at first. So, okay, thank you. I'll come back. All right. So again, if your name is called, it's to speak to the amendment. If you want to wait to speak to the entire ordinance, you could pass on this option and wait for your second round. Next speaker, please. Jackie Phelps. Jackie Phelps. Jackie Phelps. Next speaker, please. Matthew Isaac. Matthew Isaac. Next speaker, please. Maria Smith. Maria. My name's Maria Smith. I live on Camille Street, and thank you, Mr. Conk, for representing me. Um, as far as the amendment itself goes, um, I want to um, just say I, I don't think it's an adequate solution to the, the intent of the resolution. Um, I think it's a last minute. Um, sort of cobbled together solution, which doesn't fix the original flaws in the resolution, which is the reason that I oppose the resolution. Um, I think it would be more profitable for me to detail those when that time has come. But for now, I am saying that I don't think this amendment is adequate to fix those original flaws. Um, so if that would help um, move this discussion forward. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that we all go home before midnight, which I doubt is going to happen. Um, I, I would just like to say that I don't think it, it, it fixes it um, because it simply just piles on to what the police board is already doing. With, um, I'm deep, deeply disappointed to hear that the police board is being allowed this residence requirement. Um, I, and I think it just compounds their mistake. So um, just for now, I just want to say that I, I, I'm not happy with that part, and I don't think the amendment fixes the problem. But thank you for your effort. <laughs> thank you. Next speaker, please. Brad Prejean. I concur with the lady who just spoke. And I'd like to go one step further and compliment my councilman, Councilman Kenneth Bro. I thought I was a passionate person, but you've got me beat, brother. And I urge you to stick with your original reasoning where this issue is concerned. I'm sure everyone in our district will support that. Ne Next speaker. Marja Broussard. Good evening. I'm Marja Broussard. I'm the president of the NAACP and was the target of the hanging that Ms. Candace made. But we're not going to go there tonight. I want to thank uh, the board, for uh, council, for allowing me to address you tonight, and um, Mayor President Joe Robodeau. On the afternoon of March 11, 2016, a complaint was filed with the office of the district attorney, Keith Stutes. Ms. Broussard, don't go there yet, it, just on the amendment right now? If you, well, and then I you'll come back the second time if you wanted to speak to some others, no, no. other time This is about outside. this and why I oppose it. But the amendment. You well, the amendment is not. The, right. the amendment yeah. doesn't cover what I'm going to say. Right. So you, so you want to pass right now and speak to the ordinance as a, in its entirety, right? You see, what happened is no. an amendment was made, so now 
we only addressing but, that. But the amendment is not, the, the amendment is not, doesn't suffice the need. Okay, and you could say that. Yes. But when you want to speak beyond the scope of the amendment, all I'm saying is that you got to wait one more time to come back and speak to that. You could still say it, it's just that the time to say it is not now. Okay, I, I believe I'm, uh, my understanding is that we're speaking on the amendment, mm -hmm. and the amendment is to have parish or city, but city and parish only when city is not available. No. Uh -uh. The, the, way the, the way the amendment has gone through as, as introduced and seconded is that the law currently, by in, interpreted by our council, the law currently does not mandate a city residential requirement. Exactly. So, right. But the gentleman here, um, the attorney, I just lost my place, excuse me, for one quick second. The Louisiana statute revised, I'm sorry, revised statute 332476H has some specifics of whose jurisdiction is it if I have a complaint against a person in the parish who is on the board, on the civil service board, the district attorney can't do anything about it. I have to get, it has to be the municipal, that's why I was reading the letter. Right. Right. So y'all yeah. could tell it, me what to do. Yeah, it, <laughs> for that purpose, it would be best in the second round. Okay. Yeah, in the second round. All right, I apologize. But I did hear you say that you, you, you basically don't think the amendment is sufficient. I oppose the amendment both ways. I mean, the, yes, the amendment is not sufficient, and that's all we're dealing with now? Yes. And then we're going to come back come and back deal with and, the yes, resolution. Okay. It, it'll be pretty quick. Or midnight, you think? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Next speaker. That, that was the final speaker. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, what we're gonna do now? Okay. There's no no council members want to speak. What we're gonna do now is vote on the amendment that was offered, and um, then we'll reopen the floor. Okay. Only the amendment, but not the ordinance. It is. It you gotta. It's not adopted yet. It's just changing it right now according to what was desired. District two. All the vote on the amendment. Yes. District three. No. District four. No. District five. Yes. District six. Yes. District seven. Yes. District eight. Yes. District nine. No. District one. Yes. Motion to amend is approved. Okay. Now we're going to have public comment on the ordinance as amended. And, and again, the only people who speak to this is those who have already signed up. And my record shows that there were four people who actually signed up who are still here. Is that correct? I thought there were three that's still here. Wallace Senegal, four. Maria Smith, Fred Prejean, and Marjorie Broussard. Okay, four. Yes, sir. Four. Okay. So you could call the first speaker, please. Wallace Senegal. Now you could speak to the entire ordinance. What that noise? Well, <clears throat> good evening again. Since you guys done uh, amended it, how how the original uh, ordinance gonna uh, gonna work? The uh, original. The original resolution that came forward, it no longer exists. By a majority vote of this body, that has been changed, so that now becomes the resolution of consideration. So the Legally, properly, and appropriately done. So the amendment take care of the whole thing. That's what you guys are saying. It, it changes it. it. It changes it. It changes the resolution that was brought forward. We're going to have to vote to see if we agree to do that or leave things the way they are. Yeah, well, the thing... I say is leave it the way it was. You know, uh, I remember when <clears throat> Mayor President uh, Joe Rubido wanted to have them to change some things for his benefit, for him to put his administration in, in order. They didn't want to change nothing. Now things are, uh, they want things to go their way and what they doing? They making, trying to make you guys vote on something for it to go their way. 
you know, and I, I can't see it having it both ways. You know, <clears throat> Ms. Lynette, uh, <clears throat> I agree with your amendment to an extent, but some, some of the wording in it, I would have to <clears throat> go a little bit further to see where you're going with this. And <clears throat> we already have a problem with uh, consolidated government. You know, uh, a couple of times we didn't brought it to the voters to take consolidation off because I think some people are just tired of the parish controlling the city and the city don't have enough control over the parish. You know, uh, they got their own uh, mayor, they got their own council. We don't get a chance to vote for them, with them, but we have council people that's from the parish voting on our issues, and our issues is not being really con uh, being considered like the parish issue. Uh, I was told monies don't go from the city to the parish. I, I, I disagree with that a lot of times because we got city workers going to the parish doing parish work, but the city is paying them. You know, uh, the <clears throat> we pay parish, city and parish taxes. Our parish taxes that we pay goes to the parish. But at the same token, you got a, a, a Youngsville, Broussard, went and got their own taxes and they paid for their sports complex. You know, but our tax dollars within the city is going to the parish, but it's going uh, uh, through the workers. You know, the money is going to the parish. Our parish uh, taxes is going to the parish. So, you know, it don't take a rocket science to figure a lot of that out, but that's what's happening. You know, so uh, you could tell some of the people that city dollars don't go to the parish. I disagree with it because city dollars do go to the parish through the workers going uh, uh, and do the work in the parish. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking my. Next speaker, please. Maria. Oh, Smith. hold on. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I wasn't on the right screen. Mr. Castillo. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Woodrow. Um, Point of order, this, this, this is not about deconsolidation, is it? Or, or taxes, parish taxes, city taxes. This is about I mean, civil service representatives. So I would ask the chairman that if we can keep it on that topic, if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Next speaker, please. Maria Smith. Ms. Smith. Um, I'd like to say that I oppose the resolution as amended. Um, I did call earlier today and I left a message with the council offices to, um, asking that my opposition to you be um, forwarded to you and that I get a reply that that was done. I don't know that there, that was done, um, but I, I wanted you to, to know that. I can very, very rarely attend um, city council meetings, but I appreciate your time and y'all's effort. I know y'all are here very late, very often. Um, I'm opposing it on, the, on, on several grounds. Number one, we have no need of the proposed exceptions to allow non-residents to be on uh, the board. The board exists to represent the public interests and firefighters and police officers are our neighbors and they're our public. Um, if we would move to non-resident um, members on the board, they don't have a vested interest in protecting the public interest. Part of the work of the Civil Service Board is to deal with appeals um, about misconduct and dismissals, terminations. Um, when you have a representative uh, on that board that 
belongs to this community. They have an innate feel for the mores and the values of this community and what's okay here. And one of the things I love about La uh, Lafayette and why I chose to move here and stay here after college um, is a unique focus on remaining Louisiana as we love her, but also moving forward. I am not a, a great fan of the ambition to be the next uh, Little Houston. I am a big fan of uh, being big Abbeville, where neighbors still speak to each other and still support each other and still call each other on their wrongdoing. Um, on my street, we have someone who decided to be, uh, you know, the cop of the neighborhood, and the neighbors banded together and said, we don't need that. That's not how we act with each other. Um, and I think if we move to non-residents, even if it's somebody that lives in St. Mary or St. Landry, um, their mores, their values are not our values. So number one, I don't think that that's going to reflect somebody of this community. Uh, number two, our residents have a significant education and experience background in civil service and firefighting and police work. Um, we have a first class university that we can call on, if not to fill those seats, to be our eyes and ears to reach out to those communities, to reach out to the uh, firefighters and the police officers who are actively working and need representation. Um, one of my biggest objections actually is that every other board, all 29 of them, require members to be domiciled here including those that have specialized and monetized impact on our community. If we say that, oh, well, you know, we should make an exception for the police officers, and we should make an exception for the firefighters, we should also say, well, um, maybe we should make an exception for the industrial development board that's here to promote, stimulate, develop, and advance the business prosperity and economic welfare of the parish of Lafayette, or the airport commission, or by your vermilion district or all those other ones where we require somebody to at least be a resident of here. There is no other board and until tonight when y'all said that the parish board has now allowed that, that exception. There's no other board that has an exception to that rule and I know because I read all of them because I'm interested in being on a board someday. Um, so that's my, my big objection. Okay, I don't want to make an exception where there is no need for an exception. Um, if the move is justified by an appeal, I'm going to run out of time, but I'm going to keep going as far as I have a minute. If the move is justified by an appeal to some expertise by a non-resident, then let's address this by a tool we already have. Every board has a requirement for training. Use that training time, okay, to get the officials on it educated in an area that they need to be. Um, now more than ever, we need the investment of local residents in the expected civil standards of our community. I think this resolution is ill-conceived, short-sighted, and unnecessary. And finally, let me suggest that if there is a difficulty in filling seats, that someone from civil service, or the council offices, or the mayor president's offices, or community development can be detailed to outreach and recruiting for all of the 30 boards that are vital to citizen involvement. Time is here. up, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Fred Next. Prejean. Prejean. There was a time, and I don't recall if it remains, there was a time on the police cars, it said city police. I don't recall ever seeing that on a fire vehicle but it's been my understanding that the Lafayette Fire Department is dedicated to putting out fires in the city, but lend a hand to other municipalities. So if, if that is correct, then we have city police and city firemen. Why should we allow anyone outside of the municipality to serve on this board. I believe and I maintain that the um, persons selected must be a resident of the city. And if there are no 
applicants from the city, then someone from the parish can be selected. But keep in mind, why do we call them city police and city firemen and allow an outside entity to come in and control to some extent by one vote what takes place in the city with the city police and the city fire department. That does not make sense to me. That does not compute. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah. Mr. Escott um, has brought something to my attention that um, okay, let, we're gonna share you. with, let me put your mic on first. Mr. Escott is going to uh, share something as sure. he's continuing to read. And, and let me just put this out there right now because, you know, people are watching. What was um, that th th this is how the process works. And when we're asking for information on the go, okay. um, you know, as the attorneys continue to read and, and look, um, they discover new things. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you would, sir. First of all, let me let me apologize for uh, misspeaking on one particular aspect. And Mr. Prejean, that just spoke, absolutely has it right, and that is the when you read the statute, and I've read it now for ten times. Um, it does appear to prioritize the city of Lafayette residency first, and second, the parish. Of, of Lafayette residents and it's by adoption of resolution permitting that uh, residency requirement uh, and so my suggestion uh, would be that the council simply defer for one the one period to go to the next meeting because because it being a resolution it doesn't require two a legal can get its hands on it and rewrite it completely so that we can prepare the resolution such that the applicant prioritization would be city of Lafayette resident first, parish of Lafayette resident second, and then you can go outside the parish third. Okay. So, so with that said, um, Councilman Cook, you made the amendment that was already voted upon and seconded by Councilman Conk. So we've already made the amendment. The, the resolution as it is today is amended, so we would be deferring the resolution right. as amended right. for that time. That that would be the consideration. Okay. Uh, before we go to that, member wants to speak. Mr. Castillo. All right. Mr. Hebert jumps out of his seat over and he, he changes the whole game plan. Oh, uh, it actually didn't come from Ms. Daybear, it came from Ms. Williams. Ms. Williams? Yes. Interesting. It's a certified clerk. <laughs> <laughs> you, know he, you know he wrote that law. In 12 years in Baton Rouge, he did that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm proud to say that I did not author the resolution and did not see it until tonight. So uh, I, I don't have authorship rights of the resolution under, under no, review. <laughs> all, the subsections that we, all the sections that we read in subsections, I don't see it as the city getting the priority because, like you said, well, I, it's yes, kind of. Let me let me let me add the phrase that is the the phrase upon which is the key, and that is it's after it's it's in the subparagraph B where it's talking about the two members. However, the two members can be residents of the parish, and then it goes on to talk about the five year. They have to be at least five years preceding their appointment upon a, and then it says upon adoption or resolution. So permitting residence location by the local governing authority. So it says you have to be a city of Lafayette resident, but as to the two members, if adopted by resolution, so permitting, you can be a parish resident. So priority is, or at least the statute does, um, stack those priorities as city of lafayette guy that's the five that's the residency requirement for all five however for the two if permitted by resolution you can be a parish of lafayette and then the third one is exceptions i suppose if you have neither you can make exceptions to the residency requirements mm -hmm. 
and Mr. Castillo. So, Mr. Just, Robito just to was let correct. you know that's the truth yet. <laughs> <laughs> Another attorney in the house. No, no, but, but the, the, the numerous AG opinions on this issue speaks to that. And, that, that, and that's why, what is this? you know. Don't get me wrong. I understand yeah. it's a city police department, city fire department. I understand all that. You, you, you stack in city first and then Paris second, but I, I'm still uncomfortable with that because I, I can't vote for the person I want to vote for because now nah, you got to tell me I got to vote for this city guy. I don't like it. This other guy, he's doing a good job. I want to vote for him, but I can't because he's not a city guy, but he's a parish guy. He lives in the parish. I really have a hard time with that one. Oh. Well, the resolution as amended right. gives you that flexibility. And I like the resolution that we have in front of us. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to support a deferral. I'm going to support the a resolution as amended. Um, just to let everyone know. And, and just for clarity, Mr. Castile, none of the resolutions stack it. That's the way the law is written today. If you read it, yeah. If you right. can, if, if you read it that way, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the, yes. that's the way it's written. We had, we had a lot of different interpretations yeah, tonight. The, 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 uh, the, the way it's written is, is just like he read it. What, it. what it does is a resolution, and that's what we actually did with the police department. It just went beyond the parish. It went outside of the parish in that particular case. But it was the resolution that allowed the member to come from outside of the city of Lafayette. It's just that it's, it's a little bit... Uh, even more exaggerated because it went to another parish, not outside, not just simply outside the city. So that's how that happens. Yeah. And, and, and Mr. Mr. Chairman, actually, for clarity, this resolution essentially does both. It, it is essentially what B, subparagraph B talks about, and that is, it, it is the resolution, the adoption of the resolution that allows residency in the parish of Lafayette. Uh, and then is also the one that accomplishes the establishment of the exemption to residency under subparagraph C if, he, if you have neither. So it's actually two in one, so to speak. Okay. Well, you, you, you ask for consideration for deferment so legal could get it right and, and wrap their arms around it. So let's just dispel it that. If someone's interested to move on that, let's address that. If not, we continue on. Is anyone interested in offering up a motion to defer it until next meeting? I do. Mr. Lewis is making that motion. Well, I guess I was finished. Does he have a second? I'll, I'll come back to him. He was finished, then he came back. But Does Mr. Lewis have a second? Okay, the issue is going to fail for lack of a second. Would you like to talk some more, Mr. Castillo? Okay, Mr. Nakin. <laughs> so, in a sense, what you just said, the resolution on the table that's as amended gives both. That's correct. It, 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 it just doesn't give anyone a, a priority. Is what it's, in other words, it's not stipulating city first, then this one, then this one. That's correct. But it does give the opportunity, both the city and a parish guy, first options versus someone coming from outside you're going to go a parish resident which whether it be city of lafayette or a parish guy before it'll go outside outside that's correct so that's why you're saying it does both all right i just want to make sure i understand it correct thank you yeah all right so again i i because of the um the clarity that the council wanted to make we allow that to happen let's now return back to blue cards our next speaker please Final speaker, Marja Brusor. What does it all Thank you again. Uh, Mayor President Robodeau and Council, I appreciate you allowing me to speak to you tonight. Um, I believe that the amendment would be inappropriate as well for the simple fact that uh, Louisiana Revised Statute 332476H reads that. Um, a member of the board shall be liable to be removed, and it gives various reasons. And it says the district attorney 
of the district wherein the board member resides may institute such suit. So this is what happened with us. And it, uh, it, it was interesting that it was uh, back in 2011 that was changed to suit Guy Lebaton. On March 11, 2016, a complaint was filed with the district attorney, Keith Stutes, concerning a political inflamed and racially um, insensitive Facebook post by Lieutenant Guy Lebaton. Um, we did what uh, rules, we researched it, and we learned that we needed 25 signatures plus a letter to the district attorney, who let us know at that time that Guy Lebaton does not live in the 15th Judicial District. We would have to go to the 16th, which is where he lives. Well, the, six, the 16th Judicial District is saying, well, it didn't happen here. It happened in Lafayette. And what citizen would sign a petition to be involved in something that they have no earthly idea what's going on? Unless the law is changed, where the district attorney of the municipality where the seat is would have some jurisdiction, then if they're in the parish, they cannot be, the, the, the city, the residents of the city in which that person sits cannot bring a complaint against them because we don't have any jurisdiction. The jurisdiction lies in the place where the person resides. So for that reason, I oppose that as well. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all could research, and he knows that, Mr. Paul, over there. He can look it up for y'all. OK. It was indicated that that was, in fact, the final speaker. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any other members who's going to chime in. The resolution has been amended. So now we will vote on the resolution as amended. District two. Yes. Yes. District four. No. District five. Yes. District six. Yes. District seven. Yes. District eight. Yes. Nine. Yes. District one. Yes. Motion to adopt as amended is approved. Okay. We're going to now move to reports and our discussion items. Jeremy, could you please read item number seven? Red Flex, Contract and Collections. Mr. Terrio, you have the floor. Okay, who do we have tonight? Uh, let's get into the weeds here. I'm going to be talking to the attorneys. Who do we have in the administration who can talk about who's going to be uh, answering questions on Red Flex? Anybody in particular? And do we still have somebody from the police department also that's going to answer questions for Red Flex? Oh, God bless you. You're here late. All right. Let me, um, let me start off with um, this is going to be directed toward the administration. First question, when did the Red Flex contract expire? I'm showing June 4, 2017. Is that a correct statement? That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And could you give us reasons why it was not renewed? Um, in some conversations, I don't think there were the votes on the council to renew it. get into the RFP process which for anybody who's up this late that's a re request for a proposal um, from what I understand the LC LCG issued the RFPs in February 2017 does that sound right to you yeah okay the proposal deadline, the RFP proposal deadline was March 28, 2017.
we received proposals from uh, two uh, two into individual companies I guess uh, one was on the 28th I don't know when the other one was so we did re 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 uh, receive requests now the first question I have is that who evaluates the proposals when we receive them who at LCG evaluates them as a team I think uh, some from purchasing were you on it Lowell, Lowell was on it um, Warren Abadie, I think, was on it with uh, traffic. Police department had a representative. So you're looking three, four people? Mr. Well, Duyon, Ms. Uh, Ms. Oliver, I think, Thomasina from Purchasing, and you're saying a police uh, officer? Public Works, police, yeah, so at least four. Okay. To your knowledge, and I think I've heard you answer this already, has the contract been awarded yet at this point? No. And it has not? It has not. Okay. Um, Mr. Um, Escott, I want to get into the next one with you and dealing with what's called a protest of award. You with me on that? Yes, sir. And you aware of what I'm talking about? Sure. Yes, sir. Okay. So the administration just said that we have not had uh, the contract awarded to anybody, but yet we received a protest of award from one company that had uh, sent in a RFP. So how can we have a protest of award if it wasn't awarded? There was not a formal award of the contract. The protest of award was a classification uh, attached to a letter from a New Orleans law firm that represented Redflex that was uh, attempting to challenge what it believed to be was would be ultimately the award of the contract that never occurred but the protest of award by red flex stating that ats had been awarded the contract that was in fact incorrect that ats had not been technically formally awarded that contract so why would they be um, why would they send a protest of award and what would give them the assumption that it had been awarded I have no idea what was in the minds of the lawyers in New Orleans that were representing Red Flex I suspect they were concerned about the timeliness of any objection prior to award that would give them the right to then file an injunction in court uh, if they got some indication that perhaps they were going to lose the RFP they wanted to make sure that they did everything they could to stop that RFP. Okay. Okay. So we've established the fact that there was a bid proposal RFP sent out. We did receive two RFPs back from two individuals, I so think, companies. I think there were three. And who was the third? I don't know who you know of the two. If, uh, I can well, give I you Red Flex and ATS, or there are two. Who would I think be the, the third? third was Sense, Census. Census? I think is how they pronounce it. Wait, let me make sure I'm telling you the right name. Yeah, Census America Incorporated. Okay. I'll verify that. Okay, in dealing with the um, protest of award, Red Flex was saying that uh, naturally um, uh, one of the bidders, I think it was ATS, was not compliant with the RFP that was sent out by, by LCG. Yet, ATS was the one that was given the highest score when they were evaluated. So this comes back into the play again, okay? Nothing's been awarded, but yet somebody's got a highest score, somebody's got a lower score somebody has been picked but nobody's been awarded the contract so 
this this is where I'm trying to understand what's happening here. Basically, they were saying that ATS was not compliant with the RFP because they did not meet the, uh, the qualification or the uh, the compliant qualifications of SOC one and SOC two, as uh, listed in the protest of award by Red Flags. In addition to that, uh, there was questionable information in dealing with the score sheets that dealt with ATS. Um, as compared to red flex. Is there, is Ms. Thomasina here or anybody from the administration? Or is it Lowell, would it be you guys that would talk about the uh, score sheets? Mr. Duyo? If I had the score sheet in front of me, I could tell you more. There were, there were three or four categories that we listed. Uh, one, financial uh, stability and, and uh, um, experience, and I don't remember all four or five of the categories. Okay, so in your opinion, would you think that the score sheets, uh, and again, I'm just going off the information that was provided to um, actually to LCG, so you guys would have seen this before I saw it. Um, there were questions about the scoring system uh, and more or less uh, ATS was given uh, favorability over Red Flex who had been here for a long period of time. So there were questions about the scoring procedures and that. So in your opinion, was there everything scored correctly? Oh, I believe so. Yeah, absolutely. We looked at, we looked at everything, not just uh, locally, but nationwide particularly on the, um, on the financial aspect and the, um, the experience. Okay. And one thing I want to, I want to mention here, and there may be some here that might be thinking that, um, I'm defending red flags. I want to be very clear because I think everybody knows that I don't support either one. I don't support the program. Okay. So I'm not in defense of ATS or red flex or either one. I'm just trying to get to the, to the bottom of some information I see here. One thing that was mentioned here, and uh, Mr. Escott, I guess I'm going to throw this to you in the, in the legal aspect, and if you can't answer it, then I guess the administration will be, but uh, the final and third thing that, that Red Flex was very concerned about is that ATS had a relationship with an LCG official that gave ATS an unfair pricing advantage, which is why they scored less or better than red flags. Is that something you can address or is that something the administration needs to address? Um, I, I'm not aware of any uh, what they would consider engage, engage, uh, improper ex parte communications that improperly influenced the pricing. I was not personally involved in the uh, actual RFP itself, nor the receipt of the responses, nor the, the, the scoring. Uh, <laughs> Let's take a step back because you just mentioned ex, ex parte. So you're looking at the protest award that I've looked at. Absolutely. And you're agreeing that that's what it says in that protest of award, what I stated. I, I, I see in the letter uh, protest award. You can read it if you like. Read the whole paragraph. No, I don't, I don't need to read it. Um, that was submitted by the New Orleans lawyers on behalf of Red Flex that they they allege or claim that there was some improper ex parte communications that affected some pricing. I, I guess I'm, I'm still curious as to why we're even talking about this because this is all moot in the sense that the RFP, the, all the proposals were rejected. I, I, I don't understand what the point okay, of this is. Okay, and that's, that's where I'm trying to get at here. This was an initially a protest of award, but I was told there's no award to protest. So That's my correct. first question is, why would Red Flag send, a, send in a valid legal document as a protest of award, but we're this, being told there was nothing awarded, okay? So well, we, yeah, the, I mean, the, the letter that I'm, I'm looking at is nothing more than a certified letter from a lawyer um, claiming to assert certain positions on behalf of its client that have yet to be either been filed in a formal court of competent jurisdiction or proven for that matter. It is simply a claim of a lawyer as to what he says as to why we should or shouldn't go forward and award the contract. Uh, I mean, it, it's, 
that that that's that's a, to me is, you know is is what it's worth. Well, and that's where I want you to go with this. So basically, the protest of award by Red Flex has been rescinded by them, and it's more or less a moot point at this. Uh, there's been no affirmative action on their part to affirmatively rescind it. It has become moot because all proposals were rejected. That was the formal uh, letters that went out to all three respondents, okay. rejecting all bids because of a, um, a change in scope, and the RFP was withdrawn. Okay, that's that's where I was going next. Okay, <laughs> because we had three, you know, requests. They submitted three, but now they're all rejected. That's correct. And what change in scope are we talking about? That is. I can I can possibly answer it, or I don't know if the administration wants to answer that. Sure. Um, in conversations with the the existing um, red light cameras, there was a lot of uh, reservation about the renewal of that, and so the question that I posed was to some of the council was, well, what if we do it in school zones only? Would that be something? Um, that the council would be okay with and and the response was much more favorable than it was to continue along with the red light program that currently exists um, as a as a condition uh, for, for me it was important that if if in fact we were going to to um, to implement school zone infractions only that I would also have the authority, which I think we do already, but I would want the authority to take those individuals to court just like I would with any speeding ticket to say if you're, if you're speeding in a school zone, then we're going to make sure you pay it. And we're not going to have the situation that existed for the previous decade where we relied on the, on the good nature of the individuals that received the tickets on whether or not they decided to pay without, um, without us pursuing it in any kind of enforceable way. So. Um, that was the scope change. We engaged conversations with both Red Flex and um, ATS, and um, and so we have met with those guys to say, would you be interested in providing us with proposals uh, for that more limited scope type of engagement? And so we're currently in conversations with those guys. They have provided us with some uh, documentation uh, proposal type documentation that we're uh, with that we're uh, analyzing right now okay and that is the extent of the scope uh, the change in our RFP yeah so the the school zones is the scope now does that mean we want to get rid of the instances where a neighborhood says we've got people speeding through our neighborhoods can you can you provide us with a temporary uh, uh, Talking about the speed vans? The vans, although they don't really use vans anymore, none of them, they would prefer to use a, uh, a smaller tripod type uh, piece of equipment than the vans. A stationary setup, basically. Stationary, but not permanent setup. So, so they've included information on, on that type of equipment also. Okay. And you mentioned you talked to some council members already about this? I, I did. Uh, prior to the renewal, um, uh, I was made aware that the votes, there was some individuals that came to me and said, look, by the way, I'm not voting to renew that contract. Um, and so I realized that it wasn't going to get renewed, so I'm I didn't bother bringing didn't it. You contact me. I can't believe. Well, I think I knew, I knew that you were opposed to Red Flex, and <laughs> I assumed that that was an additional no. I hear you. But don't forget, I am called Terry No. That a Terry O, okay? All right, let's um, let's get into um, the cameras again, and uh, I guess uh, Mr. Thomas may need to uh, be aware of this. I'll be getting into information with you if you're available. The cameras have been down since when? Uh, June. Well, they Mayor had how June many days after? I, I after believe the, they had sixty days. Sixty days since the expiration. So yeah, July, August. Well, I have them. I have the initial camera starting in May or June when they started taking them down. So the final camera was taken down in August. Is what you're saying? Well, no, they I had to be, or they became our equipment. So, yeah, no, so they, they may have been turned off at the expiration of the contract, which was yeah. June, whatever that date was. All right. The uh, cameras have been down May, June, maybe July or August is what you're you're telling me. 
Um, Mr. Thomas, do you have uh, some uh, statistics that you're going to be able to fly off the top of your head that you can provide me? It's kind of late. <laughs> kind of late. That's why we need to be all fired and chippy and bushy-tailed, yeah. you know? If, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can't get to a discussion item till 10 o'clock. I mean, we can drink some coffee. Um, so I'm t I guess I'm, I'm to the understanding you don't have statistics on the crash data at each one of the red light locations before the cameras were taken down for the last six months. And I want to know how many uh, crashes have been at those same locations since they have been taken down. And I specifically, when I was uh, uh, mentioning this, I wanted somebody from the police department who was in that department to be able to provide that data to us tonight. You I don't have that information? I was not given that information, no. Nobody gave me that information, asked me that. Okay. I spe specifically made the request that somebody come with the data that I was going to be needing. Very educated on the data. Who handles the, that particular information at LCG right now? In the police department, who handles the information that's provided there? Um, I mean, we can research and get that information. Uh, we have nobody assigned to the raid flex or anything like that. Uh, that particular program, the way it worked was, we were able to place um, the, the vans or, or, or anywhere we want them. But uh, somebody from Red Flex uh, that we deal with directly has those type of numbers. Well, and that would be uh, uh, <laughs> Andy Shikowski, uh who works for uh, Red Flex. She would have those numbers. I thought it was kind of a joint effort in the past between LCG's traffic department and the police department and Red Flex to have that information because I sure know when it was selling the program, you know, oh, great, this is about safety and men. Every, every, every department was spitting out different kinds of data. Yeah, in traffic 20, department, the police department, and Red Flex was all saying how, you know, uh, a godsend and rainbow and, uh, you know, uh, happy-go-lucky and uh, uh, this was going to be. In 2012, it was given to us, and uh, it's between the Lafayette Police Department and Red Flex uh, was the only two involved in it. Prior to 2012, and I know uh, a number of us here have been here since 2008, so for that four-year period, I've had some inquiries as to who handled it before the police department. Uh, that was tr uh, I know Tommy, Tony Trammell Tommy, was here. Yeah, Trimble. So it was handled by LCG. Yes. Okay. It was not Public Works. It was LCG that handled it. Yes. Okay, and then when he retired, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think somebody from your department let me know that that's when it switched over to the police department. Yes, that was in 2012. Okay. Mr. Terrio, when you said LCG and not Public Works, what, what does that mean? Well, when you say Tony Trammell. Yes, but there's a difference now. Tony Trammell, it was the transportation manager. Right. He was not in Public Works or, or part of Public Works. Director. That's when we had a traffic department. I remember. Agreement. I remember. So he was the director of traffic and transportation. That's right. That's where the program was. And then when the previous administration eliminated the traffic and transportation director and road traffic as a division, um, at that same time it transferred to the PD. But I just want when you say the LCG versus um, public, public works. works, I was trying to. I was just trying to make sure what was the difference. Because, you know, one, obviously it's a department of LCG. It's the same thing. Right. But it was designated as traffic and transportation. Right. Not designated as public works. Correct. Now, the reason I'm getting into that and one of the inquiries, and maybe you all can help me, and Mr. Ascot, forgive me if I'm divulging into something I shouldn't, but New Orleans just um, had someone that uh, a judge issued an opinion that they were going to have to pay back some $28 million because Red Flex was not under the police department from the get-go and that it was actually under somebody else. So we may be opening I'll, up for... I'll defer to, to Mr. Ascot, but it's my understanding that Arlene's charter is different than Lafayette's charter. And that's where I want to go. And, and, but I'm going to defer to the, to the legal expert on that one. Yeah, uh, our, our initial review of that, uh, which 
if I remember, that's the, one of the opinions that we could not locate. Okay, but the, the charter we could, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why it's not published or, or available, but uh, New Orleans Charter is actually different from, from Lafayette or LCGs in the sense that it specifically identifies uh, that the police department is, has the authority or is, is the authority for the enforcement of traffic regulations and citations. Our charter does not specify that particular provision as a, a function of the police department. And so I think we suspect, not having the opportunity to read the full opinion or the written reasons for judgment, uh, that that's maybe the reason why that Orleans Parish uh, Court uh, said that it was a uh, violation of the charter. Uh, theirs is different. Well, I'm glad to see it caught your attention and you guys researched it because you saw the same thing that right. myself and a number of other people. So we should be okay because, yes, which thank God, our charter is different from New Orleans. Correct. All right. Um, Mr. Thomas, uh, I guess I'm not going to hold you over too long because uh, we don't have the statistics on that. Um, I, did, I did not receive a request uh, for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I do, I can definitely get you that information. Yeah, um, I had specifically asked for somebody from the uh, division of the police department that was handling red flags and that had statistics that would be able to provide me tonight and not have to say, hey, I need to go and find it and, in, a, in a week or two and not have it, okay? So, uh, but anyway, um, I guess I'll move on from there. I mean, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Okay, Mr. Escott. Yes, sir. What is the total amount uncollected from Red Flex at this point? You want it down to the penny or? Uh, just the ball range. I think it's it. about. <laughs> it's if, if Kevin Nockin would like to hear it to the penny. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't anticipating this meeting to go so long, so the battery on my phone is getting ready to die. No excuse. But I, I think I can pull it up for you. Uh, Um, delinquent. Oh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, look at that. Uh, delinquencies as of two twenty eight seventeen. That's as 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 updated as we could get. Uh, okay. At this point, thirteen point. I'm um, I'm sorry. Let me give you the exact amount. Thirteen million six hundred seventy one thousand two hundred twenty eight dollars and seventy seven cents. All right, it's almost fourteen million dollars. Uh, almost, yep. Gross. They won't reach you. Know, okay. Right. Let me give you a minute or two to plug that in. No, no, no. I, it, it won't. I, I, I'm good. Okay. Now, recently we did uh, see something. The council, maybe the administration, spoke to some of the council members. Uh, I was not aware of it, which is not surprising. But uh, what was sent to the Ohio Collection Agency? Let me ask the administration that. What was sent to the Ohio Collection Agency? I'm not aware of anything. Uh, we were, there was a, an article, there was something that the red flag finds, there was actually a memo that was sent out by LCG to council members that, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes. So collections. But you're looking the wrong way then. <laughs> So the administration doesn't know about it. Okay. It, it's I'll late. I probably he, do. Yes, he does. I, I don't know what he knows. Um, the, I, I, I became aware of uh, some involvement uh, from a, an Ohio law firm who specializes in collections uh, being, I, I assume they were engaged by Red Flex to pursue collections of unpaid citations that were issued, adjudicated and outstanding and remain unpaid that were issued and all uh, taken care of before the uh, termination of the contract. I became aware of that, um, particularly because there was a, a suit filed in error in Toledo, Ohio 
against a particular rental car agency in Lafayette for the cars that may have gotten tickets while their renters were driving them and ran a red light or sped through an intersection. That has since been resolved. That, that was filed in error uh, and is being dismissed if it hadn't already been dismissed. And all I know is that there are collection efforts continuing, but not lawsuits. From what I understand, um, this is just some information that I was provided, is that the Ohio State Supreme Court is very favorable to Red Flex and they like it. Mm -hmm. So they've given them some very favorable rulings and judgments. Right. I'm unaware of any suits. At that, the only one that I was aware of, the rental car agency and the we, um, Mr. Abair, in fact, personally spoke with the lawyer in Ohio that filed the suit, and, and he confirmed for him, or his office confirmed for him, that that suit was filed in error, that they have no right to sue anybody in Lafayette and bring right. them to Ohio. And we then confirmed with Red Flex that they, to make sure that they were clear in, in their understanding, that they do not have authority to file suit for the collection of any unpaid citations. That that can only come from my office with the direction of the council rescinding its prior direction. Okay, so let's, let's make and, sure. And, and I think I answer, we didn't send anything. No. There was no letter from us to Ohio, and that's what I thought you had asked me. I mean, there's no correspondence between us and Ohio. No. I didn't print the letter, but I do have an email from LCG I don't know if it was from the attorneys or the administration, and it stipulates that all outstanding fines from Red Flex are still outstanding and collectible, and that they were being sent to an Ohio collection agency. I, I recall the email you're talking about. Um, I don't recall specifically who it came from. It might have been uh, 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 an employee of the administration. I can print it up tomorrow. I'm going to get it for but you. But I'll tell you this whether it was either incorrectly worded or 